When making grilled pizza, you can't just take traditional pizza dough and throw it on the grill, or this is what you'll get. It's puffed up dramatically in places, so the toppings will fall off, and the dough is still raw in the center. That's right. We need to actually remake the entire dough. We can't go with that. That's not what we want. Nope. So we're going to start over here with the flour. We didn't change anything for the flour. We're using 16 and a half ounces of King Arthur bread flour, All right. which is really high in protein, which means we're going to get a lot of gluten development. I also have a tablespoon of sugar. And here's where we made our first big adjustment from a traditional pizza dough to one we want on the grill. We're only using a quarter of a teaspoon of instant or rapid rise yeast. It's a tiny amount. And what's good about that, it's not going to puff too much on the grill. All right, so, so it's really going to stay important. flat. Exactly. You can see I've got a scale here because measuring your water, just like measuring your flour, really important to do it by weight for this recipe. Let's pop this on the scale here and zero it out. So I'm going to do 11 ounces of water. And there we are. So with the food processor running, I'm going to drizzle in the water. And I'm only going to go for about 10 seconds here. Just don't want any dry pockets of flour. We're going to let this sit now for 10 minutes. It's a process we call auto ease. So what we're doing is letting that flour really hydrate, and that gluten network starts to stitch itself together. OK, so that's 10 minutes. You don't see a lot during the auto ease. No, you but, don't. But I promise it's working. Next, we're going to add in a tablespoon of oil, just plain vegetable oil. It's going to help tenderize the dough a little bit. One and a half teaspoons of salt. And that is for flavor. So now I'm going to knead this to about 30 to 60 seconds. All right, that looks great. So we're going to do our final knead right here. And for that, we're just going to lightly oil the board. Really? Yeah, instead of using flour, we're going to use oil. That's interesting. I've never seen that before. Never seen it. Yeah, it's a good technique because extra flour at this point, it doesn't really get incorporated quite as nicely. So a little bit of oil on there does the chick. That's good. You can tell there's lots of gluten in there. Yeah, I can. You're really working. Yeah. You can't just let the machines do everything. So what I like to do is take it into kind of a log shape. We're going to divide it into the three doughs that we're going to use. So now we're just going to form these into nice little balls. So I like to bring in the sides like this. Oh, you're making a little pouch. A little pouch, yep. Flip it over. And then I like to drag my palm along the bottom, kind of pull that inside and get a nice taut skin on the outside. All right, now is that just for looks or does that serve a purpose? It's going to help hold in the gases as the yeast provides a little bit of air so you get a nicer looking dough out of it. I sprayed this before with a little bit of cooking spray. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to do the same on top. We don't want it to stick to the plastic wrap. I'm going to cover it all so that it doesn't dry out, but not too tightly so that it really restricts it from rising. We're going to go into the fridge for at least 24 hours. Oh, okay, that's a long time. It is a long time. I know, you thought you were going to have pizza today. Yeah, I kind of did. Yeah, but that low, slow fermentation is really, really important. We can go up to three days. So if you were to do this on Sunday, you could do this during the week, grill it up. So I'm going to head to the fridge. Rolling out the dough is one of the hardest steps when making pizza at home, which is why refrigerating the dough is such a good trick. When gluten strands first form, they have a curly spring-like shape that forces the dough to snap back as you roll it out. Yet as the dough rests, active enzymes get to work snipping those gluten coils into smaller pieces, giving you more workable, stretchable dough. This is our 24-hour fridge-rested dough. They look it, very different. Yeah, you see they haven't risen all that much, right? They've kind of spread out. That's a good thing. So we can leave that for the time being and focus on the sauce over here. We're going to start with a 14-ounce can of whole peeled plum tomatoes. I'm just going to pulse this 12 to 15 times, just with kind of a rough sauce. So this is going to go into a small saucepan. Now we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. This is the reserve juice from the tomatoes. Now, why did you drain away the juices, process the tomatoes, only to add them back? So we actually found that you get a much more even chop. They're not sloshing around in there with all that juice, but we still want it in the sauce. So next up, I have two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, two teaspoons of fresh minced oregano, classic Perfect. herb for pizza. I also have half a teaspoon of sugar and half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. So as soon as this comes up to a simmer over medium heat, I'm going to cover it, we'll grab the dough, and we'll head out to the grill. So our dough has rested for an hour at room temperature. It's mm -hmm. going to be nice and easy to stretch. It's a nice day for grilling, right? Perfect day for grilling. Good day to eat pizza, too. So I'm going to start with our oil. And we have a sheet pan here. We found that it's a lot easier to stretch this out with oil as opposed to flouring it. You get this nice fried texture on the outside, which is Ooh. awesome. So I'm going to start with about a quarter cup of oil in my sheet pan here. So we're looking for something that's roughly 16 by 12. It's going to be kind of an oval shape. Okay. We're not taking it all the way out. All right, so this looks good here. We're going to let this sit for a second, and we're going to tend to our grill real quick. All right. So this has been preheating on high for about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start by just scraping it down. Now we're just going to give it a brief oiling. 
Obviously the pizza has a fair amount of oil on it, so it's not gonna stick, but this is just a little added insurance. All right, we're nice and hot, nice mm. and clean and oiled. Time to put our dough on. I'm gonna use your help to hold that. Yeah, you got it. Um, and what we're gonna do is use our hands, we're gonna pick it up, it's gonna stretch a bit more, so the pizza will get a little bit bigger, and then we're gonna pop it right on. All right. One nice motion, ready? Yep. There we well, go. Well, you made that look really easy. Not too bad, right? So I'm gonna close this, we're gonna cook this pretty quickly, just two to three minutes until we get nice browning, and then we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees. So that's been two minutes. You can see we've got some Ooh, big bubbles. Yeah. These are gonna get squashed when we flip it over. All right. We're just gonna use our spatula here to go around the edge. Comes off nice and easily because we use so much it good sure oil. Does. All right. So we're just gonna do a 90 degree turn. We'll do another two minutes like that. Ooh, that looks good. Ready. So we'll put this down. We'll go for another two minutes on this side. Mmm, that looks good already. So I'll have you hold this, my landing zone. Mm -hmm. Pizza's a, a two-person job, right? Mm -mm. We'll take it off and we'll mind. flip it back over so that the really brown side is on the bottom. So now we're gonna finish grilling off the other two doughs before we top them and finish them. Now these look good even without all the toppings. I can't imagine what it's gonna be like with the toppings. I know, it's gonna be even better. So I'm just gonna transfer this over to a peel. At this point, it's a lot easier to move it around once we top it. Mm -hmm. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is build a barrier layer. We don't want this to sog out and we're gonna start adding the moist to tomato sauce and also the cheese. So we're gonna start with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, drizzle about a tablespoon over the top. Then we're gonna add the Parmesan next. It's gonna help with that barrier on the bottom. We're gonna add about a third of it. So next we're gonna put some of this nice mozzarella that you helped me tear up inside. And we wanna space it out. It leaks a lot of moisture onto the pizza and that can sog it out pretty fast. So we're gonna put a third of it on here. Now we're gonna put the sauce on. We're gonna dollop little tablespoon amounts all over it. And that's again, keeping the crust really crispy. It's the theme of today. Mm. So this looks perfect, we're ready to go on. We're mm. just gonna do three to five minutes because we've already browned the bottom. Just wanna melt everything on top. All right. I smell pizza. I smell pizza too. <laughs> so it's been about four minutes. Oh, hello. There we go, nice and melted on top. Recrisped on the bottom. So just go back with the peel and lift it off. Mm -mm. That looks amazing. So there's a couple things just to finish. We're gonna go with a tiny bit more oil. We've got some torn fresh basil here. Mm. And finally, a little bit of coarse salt. Now, we can eat. All right, ready for the crisp crust? Oh. Ooh, that sounds good, doesn't it? It does. Well, the first sign, that's not a soggy crust. No, that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. I can't wait, I'm going in. <laughs> that's so awesome. Oh. That dough has the perfect texture. It's crisp on the bottom, just a little bit of chewy in the middle. Now we used a fair amount of oil, but mm -hmm. you get that really nice, almost fried texture on mm -hmm. the bottom, those little blisters. This is one of the best pieces of pizza I've ever had. I agree, I'm still eating. <laughs> <laughs> so the key to grilling great pizza at home is in the dough. Start by making the dough in the food processor, then let the dough rest in the refrigerator for 24 hours. That ensures that it's easy to roll out, but also it stays flat as it cooks on the grill. So there you have it, from America's Test Kitchen to your kitchen, the best recipe for grilled pizza. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.